You've told me that obviously the fire happened on Zanzibar, so kind of talk me through the process between from when you actually were on fire to when you were evacuated. So what was your time like on the island and, and what kind of things were going on around you? So because of the island that I said before has, has no power, right. it also means the hospitals have minimal. They don't have none, that's unfair. They have generators that, that will probably back up the, the parts that they need to. But it's also maybe a two-hour drive away from where I was. A two-hour drive? R roughly. M maybe longer, with Stone Town. Yeah, maybe two hours in the dark without petrol because the petrol stations have no power. Mm. So the car, we don't know if it would make it, and I wasn't in a good way. So by the time I, I got to the car, which was quite a hard process in itself to get there, um, I instructed the guys to take me to the hotel that mm. I, I worked for, part of the chain, because mm. they had petrol. That was fine. So when we got there, I, I told some of the guys to get lots of bottled water. Oh, yeah. And they came back with two bottles, just two bottles of water. You know, you want a drink? They didn't get what I was asking it for. What I needed was lots and lots of water because the pain I was feeling was the burning sensation. And that doesn't go, you can't get rid of it because I was burnt all the way through. So I instructed the guys to take me to the decompression chamber. Because my background's in diving, I knew they had morphine. And I knew it was a maybe horrible to say, but I knew it was a European doctor, a Swiss mm. doctor who took care of me there. So we drove there and these, these bottles of water, I'd sit in the back and I'd say, left hand. And when I said that, they'd pour you know, two seconds of water in my left hand. Right hand, head, left leg, left ankle, back. And for the whole, it must be about half an hour away, which they didn't know the way. So while we're doing it, I had to tell them where to go because they were unsure where the chamber was Jeez. and that was all this water was the car was drenched as well but that was just trying to soothe the burning it was that was the worst i don't know if pain's the right word to use it's hard to describe it's just heat you really you feel the heat i don't think anyone could imagine i mean everyone knows what it's like when you touch an oven and then you put that it's little, like little that, burn it's under the tap but this is almost what 40 percent of your body 43 yeah it's, it, it, you can't get rid of it. And that, that momentary relief you get from the water is amazing. But as soon as that water leaves your skin, it's instantly hot. It oh. doesn't build up again. But your whole body's doing that. And, and what happened when you got to the dive center? The chamber. Yeah. So they, we couldn't tell them we were coming because there's no power. Right. Um, so it was a bit of a shock when we turned up, but they knew who I was. Yeah. Um, and they took me in and I emptied the morphine supply. And they took me to a bed and my nice legs where I'd lost my skin, you know, my, my suntan, they were full of gravel because I dragged myself across the car park to get in the car. Um, and they took all the, the gravel out of my legs and started cutting away the skin. They did what they can. We have to remember, these are diving doctors. Yeah. They're not burn surgeons. So they may be comfortable. And I, as far as I'm aware, I talked to my mother and father that night, my parents. Right. I talked to them on the, one of the cell phones, or the cell phones we had and told them that I was okay and I burnt my hands and feet, but just in case they heard something, that I, I was okay, because that's what they needed to know at that point. And uh, the next day, they, I think they helped organize the medivac flight that, that took me to Dar es Salaam. Thank you. And then it got very different. <laughs> <laughs>